Hey everybody, how's it going today? We got a really neat thing happening right now. We're here for one of the zoo's animal ambassadors annual exams. We're in the vet hospital. Some of you may have seen that episode in the past, so that's where we are right now. And we're getting ready to head back. We've already talked to um, Vet Tech Kelly and Vet Tech Heather. They've kind of given us an idea of what's going to, what to plan for. Um, the vet, JB, Dr. Minter, is coming, and maybe one of the residents is coming. Kira might be here as well. So we're excited to see that. So we're going to head back, um, and next time you see us, we're going to be in the room, and they're going to be doing the annual, ex annual exam on Terra the Barred Owl. Let's see what happens. So, JB, this is really, it's, it's a true annual exam, just like you would give any other animal, right? Yeah, so anytime you go to the doctor and the doctor says, okay, it's time for your physical exam, we're going to look in your eyes, we're going to get a weight, we're going to do all the, all the testing to make sure that you're healthy, that's what we do with all the animals here at the North Carolina Zoo. Nice. So, Tara today is having her exam done. But when you go to the doctor, mm -hmm. the doctor tells you to do something, you're going to do it. Stand there, don't. But she's going to try to bite you. Yeah, well, she's an you. owl, right? She's an owl. <laughs> um, so we're going to have to anesthetize her today. Anesthetize means you're going to, she's going to go under a medicine that's yep. going to help her sleep yep. for a while. So that what you just saw Dr. Peninson do or Kira do was give her a little sedation. Okay. So that, that amount of medication is just going to bring her, just make her feel a little bit more comfortable and bring her anxiety down. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually put a mask over top of her face and allow her to breathe in some of the gas anesthetic or basically nice. a drug that again puts you under anesthesia. Um, that sounds like what happened to me when I had my knee worked on one day. It was just they gave me a shot, kind of relaxed me and then put a gas mask on me and help me fall asleep. Exactly the same thing. Does she count backwards from 100? Uh, no, she's probably <laughs> in her little mind, she's probably going, I'm very angry with all of you right this now. Is, uh, until those strange feeling. Yeah, until those things start really kicking in, she's probably just really... She, She's, she, she, I mean, she she's, obviously you can see, held. you can see Kelly has her in her hand mm -hmm. and, and a, April and, and, and the team really work with her a lot of behavioral training where she doesn't normally have to be physically right. restrained. Yeah, yeah, sure. So she's probably thinking, what, what happened? Why am I being physically restrained right now? Do you think it helps? Because Tara is one of, she's a barred owl. She's mm -hmm. one of our animal ambassadors. So the work that April and Kat and May do with programming you think that kind of makes her a little bit more attuned? She's, okay, I'm, I'm used to being around people. I'm a little bit more in this situation. I handle some of this a little bit better. Yeah, I think it's a little bit better. But again, it's, she's still not going to allow still that it. actual physical yeah, it's restraint. That physical restraint. It's again, again it's, if you, you're you're a big man, sure. if if somebody was to grab you up and just hold you and say you're not allowed to move, again, it's yeah. some of that still a little stressful. That's okay. why we gave her that injection. And that's just to kind of. It's like just to calm it. her down a little bit. Say, mm -hmm. okay, it's not that big of a deal. Now we can do a lot of things with her mm -hmm. uh, through behavioral training. Again, April can get her up on a glove. We could do just routine nail trims. We can. Really? Big things of those natures while she's awake. But for what we need to do today, we're going to have to put her under anesthesia. Okay. So, so now she so, looks like she's feeling it. So basically, what she's going to is, is there's a lot of muscle right over that keel bone. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is obviously birds fly. Sure. So a lot of that development of muscle, and you can, and you can, we can score their body condition by feeling right over top of their keel to feel how much muscle they have. Okay. There. And you saw that um, both Kira and Sam were looking in her eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know that Tara has, has some, she's one. missing an eye. So obviously we didn't need to look in that <laughs> one. And the other one has a little bit of, she's got some ophthalmic issues in that eye as well. So and you can see right now, Kira is, is going to be supplying that oxygen and that gas in a set. This the so this is the counting backwards stage. Okay, right. count backwards now from, from 10. Um, right. So she'll be under anesthesia relatively quickly. Okay. And then we'll be able to get her on the table, and at that point we'll be looking to get some blood That's work. Sort of, we're going to, oh, yeah, okay. and we're going to get some radiographs from her today. So radiographs are X-rays. Yeah, yeah. We've talked about this before when mm -hmm. you were in the hospital. Yeah, then we had a tour. I've been in this building we have before. Been here. So, so, it's so, so we're going to see them. See them action. Yeah. Right now. Unfair question, Kelly. If I may, if you can't answer, that's fine. Let me know. Um, Dr. Minter, JB, and I were talking about the, the first drug that was given kind of relaxes her. Are you feeling some of that with her? I saw that she flapped wings a little bit. Is she kind of getting to that point where? 
Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm getting tired. And she's a little bit of a, of a push there. Yeah, but. not, uh, I didn't super feel her relax, so she's but still <laughs> um, I'm definitely grateful that I have her talents. <laughs> no, I'm sure. That's cool. Well, I'll let you guys know, it's just kind of curious to see how, how that was all put together. She might be going through a bit of an excitement phase right now, so sometimes right before they oh, go to really? sleep, they kind of get a little more excited. Okay. I guess that's true, because she's being handled and stuff. She's not used to that kind of stuff. Very cool. Hey, April. Hey, Steve. So you're one of the one of the animal master keepers that take care. Yeah. How what, kind, what is, how does this make you feel when Tara comes up to get her annual exams? Is this uh, a good feeling? I would think so. Oh, uh, it's kind of a little bit of a nervous feeling. I oh, mean, yeah. Because you never know what you're going to find in an exam like this, and mm -hmm. she is an older bird, so oh. I don't know if JB um, explained some of the like the drugs or something. A lot of times there's going to be trouble waking up. Okay. So I worry about things like that. Gotcha. I'm also a worry wart, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's an animal you care yeah. about. I yeah. think that's fair. You have to be prepared. Sure. But hopefully we find that she yeah. is just smoothing along in her nice. old age. She's healthy as a horse? <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe a healthy horse, yeah. Well, you've got a job there, so I'll let you do your job. I just wanted to come over and say hi. <laughs> Now comes the fun stuff, Cat. <laughs> We're with Keeper Cat now. Hi. <laughs> I was asking April how she feels, and she's, she's a little nervous sometimes yeah. when doing an annual exam. Oh yeah. Um, anytime an animal goes under anesthesia, it's a little. It could be True. worrisome. True. Um, but we've got a team of professionals, so mm -hmm. they know what they're doing. And they're working hard and fast, it looks like. Yeah, Kinda yes, definitely. Get in and out and be done with it. And that's really important for birds. Um, since they take in much more oxygen than we do and their oh. metabolism so fast, anesthesia kind of affects them differently than a mammal. Oh, so okay. being as fast as you can is important. Gotcha. But efficient. <laughs> <laughs> but efficient. We'll go see what's going on over here. And you can see Kira's like right now, she's checking, she's basically checking mobility in the joints. Mm -hmm. as, as she's getting older, she's probably going to start developing a little More osteoarthritis. Arthritis. Okay. So we're making sure all the joints function well. And you can see that both of them have a hold of each foot. They sure do. And the reason they have a hold of each foot is because if for some reason she was to wake up, her natural instinct is going to be able to grab something. Just like the foot is now, kind yeah. of, it's in that clenched phase. Clenched position. So you don't want that to be around your, your wrist, around your feet, around your, around your fingers. So again, they've got a really good hold of them. Yeah, and when, when we're working, and they're working together. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And there's a lot of communication going back and forth. Yeah, they're talking and making sure that hey, I've got this foot, you've got that foot, and that is really, really important when you are uh, working raptors. That you're talking to the person holding the bird to make sure that hey, I need to do this. But do you have do you have the the beak? Mm -hmm. Do you have the head? Do you have the feet? But making sure you don't get bitten or talent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay, I guess it's also the kind of process. Where are you in this? Mm -hmm. What do you need next? What's yep. coming? What's coming down the road? It's a it's a machine. I, cat keeper cat said it was it was just something very nice. He goes, it's nervous, but there's a team a team of professionals here working on Terra to make yep. sure everything is healthy mm -hmm. and safe. Yep, and we're working. And now what you're going to see is you're going to see Kelly start hooking up monitoring equipment. Okay. And now this is equipment that we basically it's this particular tiny little machine right here is going to give us the heart rate. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it will, okay, the heart is beating, it's, we've got a normal rhythm going on, okay. uh, so we'll attach that machine to it. And you can see the mask of her face, that mask yeah. of her face is basically supplying both oxygen and the anesthetic gas. And we're able to dial that in with the machine over here, we're able to say, okay, well, she's a little light, let's okay. give her a little bit more. Oh, she's a little deep, oh, okay. let's turn it down a little bit. It's not just one rate that we can You're adjust that listening. depending always. on how high or how deep or light we want her. So she's still telling us, Tara, the bird of the owl, mm -hmm. yeah. is still telling us stuff, even yeah. though she's under because anesthesia. Because, again, she may start oh, if she starts blinking her eye, if she starts tugging up on her feet a little bit, that's indications that she's a little light, okay. and we have to give her a little bit more anesthetic. So not only are you having to pay attention to the drugs and pay attention to the administration, pay attention to the shot that's coming, just pay attention to the bird, oh, the yeah. animal. I think it's the most important thing, because gotcha. the patient's going to tell you a ton of information about 
what's, what's happening, how she's functioning. Uh, so again, it's, it's constant monitoring. You'll see wow. that occasionally somebody will put a stethoscope on her. Mm -hmm. And there's all these hands, all of these people that, that I mean, you see Sam, Kira, and Kelly, yeah. they're all, all, talking, hard. all talking to one another. Yep. Again, you may not be able to hear that, but they're all right. talking with one another. Yep. Making sure that we, we're doing, providing the care that we that need, but also making sure that the bird is safe. I love it, I love it. Well, let's let them do their thing for yeah. a little bit and we'll come back. So there's a lot of stuff going on right now, digital friends. I have Chelsea on the camera over there. She's kind of watching, staying out of the way as much as she can. Of course, you've seen Kelly, you've seen Kira, uh, you've seen JB, all focused around uh, Tara themselves. I have uh, Leslie's helping out. She's over there with time because it's pretty important here. The animal folks you've heard from April, you've heard from Kat May is also here. Curator Debbie just showed up. Um, she's the curator of birds. And again, every, they just want to see and make sure everything is going well um, for Tara as they get ready to uh, draw blood, do other things with her, and then eventually take rats. What a great opportunity. So they asked us to go into this room, kind of a dark room. These rooms are actually lead lined. They're protected. So the vets can come in, the, the techs can come in, anybody can come in, get, the, get what they need out there and be safe. There's actually another one. Can you show them that one over there, Chelsea? So get ready here. Kelly's gonna tell everybody, clear. So you can actually watch through that observation window there that maybe Chelsea can show you. So what we're waiting for now is a clear designation. They'll come in, everybody's gonna come in these rooms, watch this, JB's looking, things gonna come in here. And then you'll get a clear from Kelly after she hits the button. Clear. Clear, and we're done. Radiographs finished. Right. So we're, they, I just heard them say they're starting with recovery. It sounds like they're turning off the anesthesia machine, so now the recovery process begins. Um, they, they, they took a series of radiographs. Remember, radiographs are the actual image as opposed to x-rays, which are the energy creating the radiographs. That's, oh, here comes a vaccine. Kira's gonna be giving a vaccine. Yeah, she's off, let's blow her out, JB, can I ask you what that vaccine was for? Yeah, so that's a West Nile vaccine. Oh, it's West Nile, mm -hmm. okay. So we have West Nile. It's, it's prevalent throughout North Carolina. Uh, you'll probably hear more about it and like, I mean, obviously the birds, local birds that we have here, and she would be a local bird. Yeah. This is the bird that you would see in your backyard. Right, right. This is who uh, cooks for you bird. <laughs> so it's spread by mosquitoes. Okay. Uh, birds get it. Uh, some birds, such as what we, stringiforms or owls, uh, they can get it and they can have a significant disease and die. Oh, they can. Uh, so again, we, we'll vaccinate, we vaccinate all of our raptors, all of our corvids, which are all the crow species. The crows. Okay. And then we, act, we actually vaccinate our ostriches. And then a lot of our more, a little bit more really? uh, long-legged birds, so storks and cranes and things, we, we also vaccinate because nice. they're typically outside a lot. And I guess like at the North Carolina Zoo, we have the two indoor places, the aviary and the desert. You wouldn't really need to vaccinate those because they're kind of isolated. Yeah. And we do not vaccinate any of the animals in there. Nice. Um, okay. okay. So you can see she's, she's Kira's got her in hand. Mm -hmm. um, so at this moment, it's like we're just waiting for her to recover. And she'll tell us when she's waking up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So more just conversations, and I love it, because it's happening all the time. Is that a comfort for you? Is that how you want to hold? Is it not what you want to hold? Is that perfect or not? Um, let's see what happens here, as far as the holding. So does this, does this space work? Does this challenge work? And they always back and forth and back and forth. How cool is that to think that conversation is happening through this entire time uh, that Tara's been under the care of the vets, the techs, and the student. So I heard they're going to be doing some trims. They're going to be looking at their feet, the talons. They're going to trim the talons back a little bit. Um, can she do this on her own? Absolutely. That's in, in a happy session. Yeah, I saw that. So JB just said, you can see she's kind of moving a little bit. So that recovery has begun. 
So they wanted to wait a little bit till she was a little more awake to work on her beak. So this is called coping. Yes, it's the same word as you might be familiar with. Um, but they cope with the beak um, to make sure that everything is kind of closing in the way it should. So um, there's no overlap, nothing like that. Does this hurt her? Not at all. The beak is, remember the beak is just like fingernails or hair. So that's just cutting that back. It'd be like trimming a toenail or a fingernail. It's just a beak nail. Beak nail? What do you think, Chelsea? I, I think it works. It's true to, the, true to what it is. True the idea. So coping the beak. So JB, you were going to show us the, the X-ray, the, I'm sorry, the radiograph. These are radiographs. The actual image, my yes. bad. So, so what are we, so is this Terra? This is Terra. So let me give you, a, let me blow it up, just make it a little bit bigger. Oh, cool. Okay, so basically what we're looking at is we're looking at Terra laying on her back. So she's so, like looking up. Yep, so okay. oftentimes most things that we're looking at, we're doing a minimum of two different views. Okay. You want to look two different directions because that's going to give you a better orientation. We're taking a 3D object and we're making it 2D. Making it flat. So being able to see it from two different directions will allow you to say, okay, well I see this spot there, but where is it, where is it in the depth in the of the depth animal? Of the body. Okay. So we're, again, we're looking at her from basically from her chest all the way to her back because she's okay. laying on her back right here. Making it a little bit so easier wings for you. Yeah. Legs. Yep. So give me one second. Sure. And I will say, okay. So her head is right here. She has a halo around her head there. So that halo. Remember She's that an angel. <laughs> she is an angel. Remember <laughs> that mask that we were having her wear. Oh yeah. So again, that picks up everything. Everything. So that's, that's the mask. This is the mask, and you can see the little little inner circle there. That's the circle in the mask around the thing. That's. I and see this it. is her skull. Okay. And then obviously coming down here, this is all of her vertebrae. Wow. Now, if we go move it up a little bit, again, this right here is going to be her coracoid bone, and her clavicle sits right in behind that. And now, like, your, like our collarbone, right? Collarbone and the coracoid, we don't. I mean, we have something straight, but it's basically attaching the keel to the rest of the body. Is that the turkey's wishbone? No, the clavicle is actually the, the wishbone. Clavicle. The clavicle is her wishbone, really? and it's really small. The coracoid is going to be doing, doing most of the heavy lifting here. So that is truly all those muscles, all those. It's, it's basically muscles. it's the keel bone when you when you say a chicken or a turkey. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. bone that sits right in the middle. Right in the middle. All okay. that breast muscle attaches to that. Attaches across across the coracoid to the wings and okay. is able to give that flapping motion when they're gotcha, in, gotcha. in flight. So a lot of those flight muscles attach right in here. Those are the ones that are working so mm -hmm. hard. Well said, I like that. So coming to crown humerus. Mm-hmm. And we will move off just to one side. Okay. And then right up here we have a radius. The thin bone is a radius. An ulna. And we have the same bones. In we have the exact That's same cool. bones. I like that. And then down here, this is our basically our hand. And a lot of you have really? you have a bunch of fingers yes. and, and uh, little bones in your hand. Sure. A lot of that's been merged the things to help them uh, and then you can faintly see all of these little strands here. sure all of those are feathers oh, of course they are mm -hmm. okay so again looking can you at her on Chelsea can you see that okay those oh yeah you can nice job you can see us in the background of your <laughs> <laughs> I can see you in the background they don't even see me anymore I see part of me I see part of Chelsea too is so, Leslie back there Leslie can you wave to everybody <laughs> I don't think so so then we come down here, we're going to have a heart that sits right over in here. Let's make this a little bit bigger for us. Mm -mm. Really? Yeah, there we go. A lot, oh, of wow. a lot of detail there now. Okay, so her heart sits right in here. Okay. Now the thing is, her heart kind of nestles right in with her liver. And this, if I'm going to point this out. Her heart's right next to her liver. Yep, so her heart sits right here, and then her liver kind of cradles that. That's huge. And this is what we call the hepatic cardiac silhouette. Oh, you call it the hepatic yeah, cardiac do. silhouette. So when I'm looking at that bird, <laughs> I'm basically, I, it's very hard to distinguish the heart out from the rest of the liver because okay. they kind of are nestled in re really closely together. Yeah, and this black face that you see off to the sides, mm -hmm. that's air. So soft bone is going to be bright white. I see. Soft tissue is going to be a little bit more gray mm -hmm. and darken it, and then air is going to be black. Air is going to be black. So, and that mechanics, because they, they, I know that you know birds have got to be lighter and stuff, so they've got a, a lot of that stuff going on. I do notice that the bones, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, Jamie, yeah, I, should, I should apologize. 
the bones of most birds are relatively hollow, mm -hmm. right? Again, to provide that light so they're able to fly a little better. Yep. If this was, would these bones look different in, let's say, a wolf or a fox? They'd be a lot brighter. They would be brighter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you do, you can see a little bit yeah. different. Yeah, okay. especially if you go up and you grab some of these other bones. So, I mean, you can see the cortices. This is the outside portion of the bone. So it's okay. a fancy doctor word for the outside portion. The outside. Um, when you see a bone, a chicken bone or a bird bone, there's still an out, there's a bone. Yeah, absolutely. But the inside portion is very, it's like, it's and not, an, it's hollow. It's, there's not as much structure in there. Right. Again, it gives it that, like, that light mm -hmm. that basically allows them to fly. Okay. So if you were to get a mammal, you'd see a lot more detail in the middle of the bone. Okay, so you would see kind of that, that, that light color kind of fade into the middle. You'd okay. still see the outside would be very bright. Sure. But the inside would be a little dark. Nice, okay, cool. But if you go back over here to the middle of the bird, let's grab that and move it back over. This is air sacs. That's neat. All this blackness that comes down to the side, you can see the lungs, tissues right up in here, and then as it goes down, the lung tissue fades away, but the bird still has a lot of air sex, a lot of more wow. gas, a lot of gas exchange, a lot of gas movements throughout this body. Throughout so this body. is relatively normal. Okay. Having a lot of air down through here is, is, is a normal thing. If you don't see that, you start to get a little bit more concerned because oh. is there soft tissue filling that airspace out? Okay. Um, so are things getting a little bit bigger than they should be? Is the liver enlarged? So that's when you'd be seeing okay. mm -hmm. enlargement of something. So right down here, this is all soft. This is basically small intestine and large intestine coming down and then exit. All right. Now, remember how I was telling we need two views? Yeah, yeah. So let's flip that over and look at the lateral view. Lateral view. So now we're going to go from left to right. This side to that side. <laughs> so you still see, there's her head. Oh, now see, and I was going to ask, because in the first picture, you couldn't see any of the skull. You said it was yeah. there. I'm like, JB. Yeah, we but cut here, you it. It got cut it. off because we were basically, we wanted to see the chest. That's we wanted to see everything on. inside the rest of the body. But here's her head. That's, and a, you, that's good. Yeah. So beaks coming down here. Yep. And you, you know how owls, a lot of birds have ossicles? Mm -hmm. So you can see that this kind of bony structure right in here, Right. that's that's basically the bone that surrounds your eye. That's what's holding the eye in place. Mm -hmm. And digital guess, you guys remember, we did see a skull, we saw a replica skull, cool. where that's they, that uh, the eye is so large and having those bones around the eyes. We said socket, you said mm -hmm. ossicles? Mm -hmm. so, you, so the ossicles holding the eye in place, but there's no muscles attached to it, they can't move their eye, so remember, those are guests. These have to move their head to look around. And right here, as Dr. Mentor is showing us, that's why. And that's cool. I mean, if you see an owl skull, it's a lot of bone, a lot of bony structure there. It's a it's a large place, and they've got a big eye. Yeah. So again, moving down vertebrae down here. Neat. Let's enlarge that a little bit for us. And you can see the wings coming up. Yeah. And all off there. And again, now we're looking at the, that, that, again, that body. Yeah, yeah. Let's grab this, move that over. Make that a little bit more nice. detail for us. Cool. Okay, so now we've got, see how this kind of like a little lacy, again, it's, it's reading into some of this <laughs> stuff. It's, like, it's, it's not as bad as an ultrasound, but you can see this like little lacy material yep, up in here. This is it. lung tissue. That's lung. Mm -hmm. And then these two little like lumps up in here, those are her kidneys. Okay. All of this is small intestine. Yeah, yeah. Again, this is keel. This yep. is all her keel is bone. Is this that bone you were talking about yep. earlier? Yep, so this right here is a coracoid. Nice. And then right down here is her clavicle. Okay. Wow. And you can see two legs coming off, coming out to the back. Yep. That's a good thing. Yeah, glad gotta she, have two legs. Glad she has two and legs. you can see, taking off, she, we, because the whole bird doesn't fit on the plate, we have to take it in second. Okay, okay, okay. So we have to move her around. And if we move down here, you can see there's her feet. And you can say, what are these two big circles? I was going to say, what are those two big circles? So obviously, if you've ever seen Tara, and you know, you have out, yeah. like when, the, the, when April has her out showing her to the guests, yep. she's on Jess's. So Jess's oh, are those little anklets. The, anklets. Mm -hmm, the little anklets. These are the little brass pieces. Those that are, go OK. So this isn't Tara. No, this is not Tara. So again. Bone okay, turns good. up white, metal turns up even that brighter. Brighter, okay. Mm -hmm. Neat. And then this little R, that's to give us an indication of what side was down on the, on the plate. So her right side was down. Right, right side was down. down. All right, fascinating. So, does she look okay right now? She looks pretty good. The only thing that we noticed on exam and on the radiographs what you see? is that she has a little bit of osteoarthritis or a little bit of arthritis in her, um, in her toe. 
arthritis in her toe. Mm -hmm. And we notice that her toe is a little bit swollen. This digit right here, this is her left this foot. This one? Mm -hmm. So right up in here, it's not as smooth as we would like it. So uh, right up okay, in here. Okay. Uh, and she has a little bit decreased range of motion, so the toe doesn't move as well as it should. It was a little swollen. So we're going to change. I mean, she's an old bird. Sure. Um, 22? 22, 23. Wow. She's actually wild caught, so we don't know exactly right. how old she is. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're probably going to change her analgesic plan a little bit. We're going to come back and recheck her in a couple of weeks. Gotcha. An analgesic plan would be pain, pain medication. medication. Yeah, so like you... Maybe you pop some ibuprofen every now and then I'm when you not, feel a little. Not to say that I do. <laughs> feel, a little, feel a little stiff and sore. Sure. Again, she, we're going to give her something very similar. Okay. Nice. But other than that, looks other than that, it looks pretty good for a 22-year-old bird. Nice. Perfect. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for that. You're very. And thank welcome. you again to, for your time today, JB. Oh, it's always welcome. a pleasure yeah. and always fun to talk with you guys over here. So, digital guests, what'd you think about that? An entire annual exam on Terra the Bard Owl, from start to finish. That was really cool. And to see all the teamwork that was going on. All that communication and great work by Chelsea. Chelsea had to hold that camera the whole time. So thank you, Chelsea, for all of that. So wonderful episode. And get this, we've been given permission to do this a couple more times to share different animals with you and different strategies that might be put into place. Wonderful stuff. All right, everybody, let you guys know. Um, Check back with us on Wednesdays. Remember, Zoo Adventures is on Wednesdays now, moving forward at 10 o'clock. Um, your Zoo Adventures team today was Steve in front of the camera for some of it. Leslie was on the clock today to make sure we didn't go crazy. So thanks, Leslie. Chelsea was behind the camera. Have a good day, everybody. And Dr. Minter was here, too. We could never do it without Dr. Minter and JB. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you again soon. Stay safe. Bye, y'all.